It's been a busy week in DJI leak land, and to save you trawling through lots of videos, we're bringing it all together with the most important elements. Keep watching. Hi, I'm Ashton Droning On, and a few weeks ago you'll remember that we were the first to leak the FCC entry which revealed the photos of the battery for the new Mavic Air 2. Last week, a website called Drone Friendly, based in Brazil, also spotted new certifications on the FCC equivalent in Brazil. And shortly after, another website called Drone Modelismo spotted the quick starter guide for the new Mavic Air 2. When discussing information like this, it's so important to highlight the source and who found it, because it means that if you want to dig in deeper as a viewer, you know where to go. To some of the other content creators out there taking the hard work of others, I'd suggest you have a think about that as well. Anyway, we've got a lot to talk about, so let's dig straight into it, starting with the new discovery from Drone Friendly. So Drone Friendly is a Brazilian-based website, and they spotted on the FCC equivalent over there in Brazil, called Anatel, a certification for the new Mavic Air 2. This certification ties in with the two model numbers that we spotted in our FCC leak, and in fact the model on the Brazilian certification website is one of those models. So in our FCC leak, we did spot that one of the labels of the two that we found had the word Anatel on it, and we didn't notice it at the time, but Anatel of course is the Brazilian FCC authority and that's where Drone Friendly have spotted this certification. The benefit of the Brazilian certification site, as highlighted by Drone Friendly, is that it reveals a ton of photos of the drone beyond just the battery. So let's take a look at those now and assess the visual differences. The first and most obvious is the big model name, printed large and bold on the arm of this new drone. But in addition to that, you'll notice that this new Mavic Air 2 looks almost identical to the Mavic 2. Now, many out there will find that quite disappointing because the original Mavic Air was sleek and sexy, but unfortunately, the new Mavic Air 2 just looks like a small Mavic 2. However, looking at the size chart, you can see that the size difference is quite substantial. And of course, that means a benefit for traveling. The smaller the drone, the more compact and lightweight it's gonna be. It's also clearly bigger than the Mavic Mini. That means it's going to be more capable in the air. We all know of the issues with the Mavic Mini being that it's so lightweight that it struggles in a light breeze. So that's gonna certainly help here. So in terms of size and scale, the Mavic Air 2 meets the exact demand that we have right now, which is for a mid-range model between the Air and between the Mavic 2. Hopefully that also means the price will be somewhere in the middle as well. We estimate perhaps between $700 and $900, but nobody knows this at all right now, so that's just speculation. Looking at the top of the drone, we see no upwards obstacle avoidance, but that's not a massive issue. I can't say that I've ever found that useful personally. However, it does mean that technology such as APAS means that the drone won't be able to duck down if it detects something above. There's a new power button there, which may be possibly part of cost saving, but it basically is one button with four small LEDs that we saw lit up in the teaser trailer. That's quite nice. I really like that new style, and I can't wait to see that in reality. Underneath, we see two optical flow sensors that we already knew about, plus the LED spotlight for illuminating with the ground, which is a bit of a gimmick. There's also two IR sensors down there for ground detection, and on the rear, we've got two obstacle avoidance cameras as well. It's also worth noting that on the Mavic Air 2, we don't have any side obstacle sensing as we do on the Mavic 2. However, on the Mavic 2, those side sensors only work in tripod or active track mode anyway. So they're the aesthetic observations courtesy of Drone Friendly for spotting this Brazilian FCC entry. Good work, guys. So another exciting leak came from Drone Modelismo, who spotted the quick start guide for the Mavic Air 2. It's a full PDF which reveals a lot of information here, including some of the specifications. Now, we don't like talking about specifications here unless we have evidence and facts to prove that they're legitimate. You can't get better than a quick starter guide. So let's talk about what we found. The PDF is clearly in Brazilian, but if we translate it, we get to find out that this drone will have a three-axis mechanical gimbal as expected, a 4K camera capable of 48 megapixel stitched photos, obstacle avoidance as we know, plus intelligent flight modes. Now, two important elements as well is that it will have active track and POI, and we'll come back to that in a minute. It also says its flight time will be 34 minutes. That's really impressive. If you think back to the original Mavic Air, which only had 20 minutes flight time, at the time that was pretty impressive. 
and it'll have a top speed of 68.4 kilometers per hour. That's not dissimilar to the original Mavic Air, which was about 67 kilometers. So it is a little bit faster. The manual also shows the new style remote control with its flip out top part. Now, in our early videos, we showcased this and it hasn't been very popular with viewers. I think that controller is incredibly ugly, but we just have to hope that this new drone will be compatible with the smart controller. But importantly, that controller does mention that it has OcuSync 2, and that's the key one here. The original Mavic Air only had Wi-Fi, and the consumers hated that. This new model has OcuSync, that means massive range, reliability, and stability of signal. And that's what makes the Mavic 2 Air a game changer for that mid-range model. Now, the manual also talks about DJI Fly, which is a cut-down version of the app, especially made for the Mavic Mini initially, but it's designed to simplify flying these drones. Now, the mention of that in this quick start guide does not mean that this drone is limited to just being used with DJI Fly, because this is a quick start guide. Therefore, this drone may still work with DJI Go. And the reason I think that is because this drone supports Active Track, which originally the Mavic Mini doesn't, and therefore that functionality may not even be built into the DJI Fly app at this point. Now, I have a theory that this new Mavic Air 2 may work with the smart controller for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the drone supports OcuSync 2. We know that because it says in the manual that the controller does. And historically, the DJI's Wi-Fi only drones haven't worked with the smart controller, but this is not a Wi-Fi only drone. Secondly, this is a mid-range drone. It's not gonna be cheap, and DJI would be bonkers to release a drone that doesn't make use of this expensive controller that many of their consumers have invested in. I personally love mine, and I would not fly DJI drone without it, and if the Mavic Air 2 doesn't support it, I would really think twice about buying one. I love the fact that I don't need to mess around with a flimsy controller and slot my phone into it. It's a pain, so I really hope that DJI have not made a silly error here. So this is all very exciting, isn't it? And it's all in the build-up to the event which happens in a week. However, many of you out there will be thinking there's something missing here. We have a brand new drone which is going to have ADS-B on board for the AirSense technology, but what's really cutting edge or innovative about this new model? And we're struggling to find that at the moment. However, DJI did need to replace the Mavic Air because it has been one of their most popular drones despite the Wi-Fi limitation. It's portable, highly capable and impressive, and therefore this was a natural model uplift in the life cycle. However, think back to when the original Mavic Air arrived. It beat its bigger brother by offering 100 megabits per second video, something which the Mavic Pro couldn't get close to. Maybe the Mavic Air 2 will do something similar, and until that launch event, we won't know. Anyway, in the meantime, comment below with your thoughts, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you're lonely, and click that subscribe button. Thanks very much for watching.